My name is Kit Clement, and today I'm going to review the Dianxiang Galaxy Cluster FTO. Uh, in spite of better judgment, Dianxiang sent this to me as a tester puzzle for making this review. Uh, it's been a long time coming, too, for a reasonably modern mass-produced FTO, and for the most part, uh, this puzzle lives up to the hype and build-up, but uh, has some questionable design choices that really also just kind of make you wish that you could get a little more out of this thing. Uh, but before we dive into everything about this puzzle, let's talk about what's been happening with the FTO and what makes this release so important. So the FTO has really been kind of taking off since about 2020 when uh, the lack of competitions shifted the interest of many keepers uh, to puzzles beyond the WCA events, because if you're not going to compete in a WCA competition, you know, what's the point in practicing WCA events? So despite the only mass-produced puzzles being more than 10 years old at the time, from companies like Maru, uh, Land Land, like this one that I'm holding here, and also, funny enough, the Dian Sheng, um, Cubers flocked to this puzzle just for how unique it was. Uh, for me, it gave me nostalgia for what cubing was like when I started in 2008. Uh, the way pieces move on an FTO uh, is so unlike any other puzzle. It really felt like I was learning something new, where I couldn't leverage my existing knowledge about like three by three or any other puzzles. Um, perfecting old hardware too, like this, that just, you know, doesn't really have much corner cutting, is super heavy and uh, rigid, uh, you know, this needed modding, this needed spring swaps, this needed sanding down pieces. Uh, and that also kind of fed into the nostalgia of what old <laughs> cubing was like back then too. That leads us here to the Dianxing FTO, a beast of its own. The puzzle is going to help massively with accessibility to this event. I've done close to a thousand solves on this puzzle at this point, and throughout my time solving it, my opinion on this puzzle has changed quite a bit. My initial reactions were mixed. On the plus side, the magnet strength was great, and you know it was a much better magnet feel than just tripling up my magnet strength as I had to do on my Rex TO. Uh, and still that didn't feel like a very strong magnet. Um, I still think that the Dianxian could be a, f a bit stronger with magnets, but it's honestly now just within the zone of personal preference. Also, coming from a 3D printed puzzle like the Rex TO, just having injection molded parts was a massive improvement for the smoothness of turning too. It's just so refreshing to be able to turn a mass produced FTO that isn't a land land. Uh, but I was not a fan of the color scheme. Uh, the standard land land scheme has been the effective default for most now, uh, but Dianxing swaps uh, red and green, uh, which, you know, this is consistent with their old puzzle from, you know, a decade plus earlier, but many of us immediately wanted to switch to land land since this is what most people learned off of and has kind of become the default scheme among many, but the main default one in our community. So given the fact that these caps were really hard to get apart and had crazy interlocking mechanisms, um, big L for me to have these two sides swapped when most of the current community is going to want to switch back. Uh, we'll see what becomes the default. Uh, I just hope there will be a default. And if I could put my vote, it would be land land. But, um, you know, that's uh, definitely for me, for existing FTO solvers, a big time sink and finger pain is going to go into just getting these caps swapped. Uh, but the main thing that turned me off right away was the corner cutting. Stronger magnets did help with this, just, you know, with keeping the puzzle relatively aligned. But, you know, you can do some small corner cuts, but it really just doesn't do much where, you know, my Rex definitely would. And, you know, reverse, not really possible on the, you know, other than like a little bit of something here. Uh, but, you know, this puzzle here was just pretty rigid. Even the slightest amount here just wasn't going to happen. Uh, and yeah, again, normal corner cutting, you really only get like a little less than half a piece where, yeah, the Rex TO was much, good, much better for corner cutting overall. Um... I really felt like the lockups I was getting on the Dian Shang uh, were gonna, you know, make this puzzle worse than the FTO or the Rex TO overall to me. Um, but, um, you know, especially after seeing uh, early reports of other testers puzzles with screw stripping or just straight up explosions happening, I thought I just wasn't gonna bother. 
But eventually, I did loosen the tension slightly on the Dian Shang, probably between one eighth and one quarter of a turn of the screw. Uh, and combining that with some new lube, that made this puzzle a dream. My turning style had to adjust a bit to this puzzle. Um, it is smaller, so uh, as you can see here, then compared to the Rex TO, if I align their bottom here, uh, the Danshing is significantly smaller than both the Rex TO and the Land Land, which for most people I think is going to be a plus. For me, my fingers are wider than the layers now, so it kind of made it a little harder to turn, but the weight is a big plus here. Uh, you'll see the weight for the Dianxing is much, much lighter than it is for Lan Lan or the Rex Tio. Uh, and that just made doing sessions so much nicer. You know, I did have to adjust those for turning as well for the lack of corner cutting, but uh, the smoothness and just the general lightness of it really made it, you know, easy <laughs> to solve for long sessions. And I really appreciated that. Uh, and it made it easy to kind of get accustomed to the puzzle. Once I was adjusted to the Dianxing, I was actually able to beat my old average of 5, 12, and 100 PBs. Uh, and when I go back to my Rex TO now, it just feels very loose, gummy, and like unstable. Uh, and uh, my new turning style with the Dianxing just isn't compatible with it. I could definitely adjust back, but I think I overall prefer my Dianxing now. So 30 average or five? First ever, and it's 2869. <laughs> uh, that isn't to say the Dianxing doesn't have its problems, though. The design of the pieces does not have enough redundancies or interlocking pieces to prevent pops. And this can even be seen from the video that Dianxing made of their puzzle. We can see here that the parts of the pieces that make the inner core are conical in nature. And you can see that they're sloped inward rather than outward. This means that the pieces are not being held in by each other at this point. Uh, the internals of the Rextio do have the corners interlock with the adjacent pieces in the middle layer, um, which does give it that extra stability. So how does the Dianxing just not fall apart when turning it? Well, it's all reliant on the edges. And the edges are basically the only thing that is snapped to the core, and it does uh, snap in through this sort of torpedo piece here that is uh, on the foot of it. But because nothing else is interlocking, when an edge pops, so does, well, everything else. And it's not pretty. This only happened to me two times in like 800 plus solves, but it is devastating when it does happen. The old Rex T of course wasn't free of pops either, but it was typically limited to just like one piece triangle pops that slowed you down, but didn't prevent you from finishing the solve. So even with the popping issues, I still think the Dianxing FTO is worth purchasing. Uh, if you've never tried FTO and have been interested in diving into this magnificent puzzle, you should absolutely purchase this. Uh, just keep the tensions relatively tight and you shouldn't have too many issues. Uh, the release version also uh, comes with a second set of springs too, which may help to alleviate the issue, but I haven't been able to try swapping them because they didn't come with my tester version. Uh, if you have a Rex TO, you may uh, consider just keeping your Rex uh, and wait until what appears to be later this year for the Dian FTO to release. As honestly, the Dian Shing is just not a significant enough upgrade over the Rex Cube to me. Um, the puzzle here from Dian Shing really to me has the quality of like a 2017 or 18 3x3 level puzzle. It's got magnets, magnets were new at that time, and it's a good puzzle with some imperfections. Um, but I mean, let's be real. If you have an FTO like me, You've been red pilled by the FTO Illuminati, and you're probably pre ordered the Dian Shang before I even finish making this video. So, uh, <laughs> maybe this warning does, is falling on deaf ears anyway. Uh, you can get this puzzle here for $18 at US retailers, uh, which is pretty fairly priced for this puzzle. For me, it was worth every dollar spent. Actually, wait, I, I didn't pay for this. <laughs>